Hello, I'm Marty Lee Martinez, and welcome to the very first episode of Virtual Southwest. We're going to be doing some virtual videos for you, celebrating everything that has to do with Southwestern living. And today, we are going to attempt to make tortillas. Not just tortillas, but perfect tortillas. You know, um, I'm going to go over all of the ingredients uh, and the process and hopefully the success at the very end when it's all done. Tortillas have been around since 10,000 years BC. Uh, they were first made by the Mayans and the Aztecs and when the Spaniards came, they of course took that recipe along with everything else that they took from the Mayans and uh, they spread that in it all through Mexico. So this is a very, very old recipe um, and a very old food. In fact, I'm told this is the oldest bread recipe in the United States, as we know it. So we're going to celebrate the tortilla today. Um, what don't we put tortillas in? We use tortillas for soft tacos to go with any Mexican or Southwestern dish as a side bread, um, to make quesadillas, uh, wraps, um, of course, the wonderful chimichangas. So what we're going to do today is the regular flour tortilla, first of all. Then we're going to do the flour tortilla using bisquick. Uh, and that's a little bit different. And then the very last one we're going to attempt is the corn tortilla. So I'm going to show you all of our ingredients that we have here. Um, first of all, we have regular flour. You can use Mexican flour um, that you can get at the Mexican market. I just use regular flour. This is what we'll be using. And this is bisquick mix. This is what a lot of people use to make pancakes and such. Uh, we're going to try something a little bit different with our, our second recipe and add a little bit of bisquick to the, the flour. And that eliminates the use for any oils. And of course, the last one we'll be making the corn tortillas. And this is, of course, the corn flour that we'll be using. Uh, in, uh, here's some equipment that you'll need. Obviously, you're going to need a large mixing bowl. Uh, measuring cups so we get everything just about right. Get some plastic bags. Um, we'll be using those a little bit later and I'll show you why. Also, it's good to have these for storage once the tortillas are done. Uh, extra virgin olive oil, some salt, and we're almost ready to go. This, my friends, is a tortilla press. We'll be using this a little bit later, but um, these you can get almost anywhere. I would go to the Mexican market. Um, this, of course, is a very clunky, heavy metal one. There's also wooden ones. They come in all different sizes. They help you cheat and make, uh, make it a little bit rounder, but I think that we can actually get the same effect with a rolling pin if we need to. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and begin. Okay, so it's time to mix our tortillas. But first, I forgot about uh, one of the most essential tools of all, the rolling pin. We'll be using this a little bit later. Okay, so for our first recipe, uh, we'll, we're gonna show you this on the screen as well. So if you wanna write these ingredients down, we need two cups of flour. The nice thing about the tortilla recipe is that it's actually very, uh, simple and the ingredients are actually really very inexpensive so tortillas will not uh, break your budget even if you're on the tightest of budgets okay so i'm going to make sure i do this very uh, as accurately as i possibly can ordinarily i would probably have a face mask and gloves on preparing food for other people, but since I'm doing this just as a demo, 
we're gonna go ahead and forgo that. Okay, so two cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt. Okay. All right. Okay, one teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of olive oil, making a mess and I haven't even started. Three, oh, three tablespoons. One, two, and three. Okay. All right, now, the uh, instructions say to use three-fourths of a cup of very hot water. I found, I've encountered this in many recipes, I'm not sure what the significance of the hot water is as opposed, as opposed to cold, but I think that it has something to do with how it responds to the dough and how the dough will rise. Um, obviously, if you're cooking this somewhere that doesn't have hot water, tap water will be just fine. But I'm going to go and get some super hot water from the faucet. So this is, we're going to use three-fourths of a cup, so I'm going to use not quite the whole thing. Excellent. Now comes the fun part, the mixing. We're going to mix all these ingredients together. personally made tortillas since my home ec class in seventh grade and that was back in the 1970s and this appears to all be sticking to my fingers but that's okay another reason you might want to wear gloves okay there we go and what you want is a a firm consistency you you don't want it too runny but um if it feels like it's a little bit too hard, you can always add just a little bit more water. And same thing with if it feels like it's uh, a little bit too runny or too pliable, you can always add a little bit more flour. So, all right, we're gonna mix this up. And after the dough is all mixed, you're just simply going to roll it into little balls and you're going to save these little balls for about five minutes. You want to let it, you want to let the dough sit. Okay, so now our dough is ready to be rolled into little balls and we're going to let these balls sit for a few minutes before we take to them with the rolling pin. And I'm just going to put them right here. I'm going to make fairly large tortillas today. So I'm going to make fairly large dough balls. And uh, this may take you back to elementary school when you played with clay or if any of you are potters or artists that work with ceramics, you probably, this will feel very familiar to you.
Okay, so now, now we are ready to begin rolling our little wonderful balls of lovely dough into tortillas. And uh, it helps to put a little bit of flour on your surface as well as a little bit of flour on the rolling pin. Um, and as you can see, mine is almost a perfect circle. <coughs> Not really. It looks more like Africa, but that's all right. Ah, oh, but you see the dough, the important thing to notice is the dough is the exact consistency that we want it. It's firm, but pliable. It's not gooey. And it's not crusty. So we're going to go ahead and roll a few more of these. And then we'll be ready for the final test. Okay. All right. Well, we got uh, most of our little balls of dough done. We're going to try heating them up and cooking our tortillas. I like to use the cast iron skillet. Um, I enjoy the texture of it. I enjoy the cleanup of it. It's a little bit heavy to carry around, but um, I really like and I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil and we're going to turn this, the, the stove top onto medium heat. We don't want it too hot, but we do want it warm enough so that it's going to, of course, cook the dough. All right, let's begin with our first tortilla and see how we do. This might take a few minutes. <laughs> Usually a minute on each side flipping it and we'll see how many times we have to flip it. Usually you can eyeball it and tell when it's done because you'll start to get the little griddle marks, all of those wonderful little, uh, those little burn marks that we look forward to seeing. Okay, well, now it's beginning to look like a tortilla a little bit. You'll notice that lovely coloration. Uh, this is exactly what we want to see. And this isn't a very beautiful shape. It wasn't uh, very accurate, but I assure you it's going to taste wonderful. Actually, I'll just pan in on it. Pan in on this pan real quick. Ah, oh, so here we go. Our first batch of homemade tortillas. I'll tell you, they're not much to look at, but with a little bit of butter, a little bit of green chili, these will be delicious. And with such easy ingredients, you'll, you'll be asking yourself, why do I even buy tortillas at the store? These would also be good for uh, street tacos, those little tacos. So, now that we've conquered flour tortillas, we're gonna move on to flour tortillas with Bisquick. Well, I didn't burn the kitchen down and I was able to make our first batch of homemade tortillas. And you know what? Those were delicious. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would show them to you, but me and my crew just ate them all. Okay, so now we're going to try something a little bit different. The texture is going to be a little bit different. We're going to make the Bisquick tortillas. So the first thing we're going to start with, I'll show you the recipe on screen, so you, you can write it down if you'd like. But we're going to start with one cup of Bisquick baking powder. Exactly 
half the flour that we used on the last batch. So let's see. I'm a little suspicious already, but we'll see how this comes out. So one cup of flour, one tablespoon of salt, tablespoon of salt. Okay. And a half a cup of very hot water. All right. So you'll notice something. No oil. We're not putting any oil in it. That's the best part. Okay. Some hot water. Half a cup. And just like our previous mix, we're going to knead the dough just like we did before. I can already tell this is a different consistency. Um, it doesn't feel as heavy. I can tell you that the dough doesn't feel as heavy as, as the last one did. Um, I don't know what that's an indication of, but we're going to mix up this dough just like we mixed the last dough. We'll let it set a few minutes after we roll it into little balls. Okay? Boom. Aha, it looks as though our Bisquick tortillas uh, have been rolled into little balls and they are all, they've set for the required five minutes that they were allowed to set. And it looks like we're ready to roll out the barrel and see how these cook. I'm anxious to see how this comes out. Um, especially since we just cooked the tortillas the traditional way, I'd like to compare the difference. Um, like I said, the dough feels much lighter and almost fluffier. Definitely not as heavy as the last dough, but we're going to see how these fry. And you're basically going to fry them, uh, cook them just like you cooked the regular tortillas in a skillet with a little bit of oil uh, and let's say medium heat and we'll see how well the Bisquicks cook up. Mmm. That's the noise that we like to hear. I can already see a bit of elevation that wasn't there before. Oh my goodness. And they seem to be browning very quickly. Oh, look at that. Now that's a good looking tortilla right there. <laughs> if I had more time and more skill, those would have been a little bit larger, maybe a little bit rounder, but that's all right. So we're gonna go ahead and cook these all up and we're gonna do a little taste test to see which one is better. Now, we're ready for the taste test. These are the Bisquick tortillas. Um, they cooked a lot faster than just the flour tortillas. They feel a lot fluffier, and even with the, the fluffiness, they seem lighter. So let's see if they pass the taste test. Mmm, wonderful. Just needs a little bit of butter. Perfect. Okay, so we've mastered the flour tortillas and the biscuit tortillas. Let's try our hand at making homemade corn tortillas. Okay, so we're ready to conquer our corn tortillas this time. So this is the corn, uh, the the corn flour, Maseca, I this brand was highly recommended to me. I've already put the one and a half cups of hot water here in the bowl, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my two cups of corn flour. And you'll notice what we're not adding. We're not adding oil, and we're not adding salt. By the way, on that Bisquick recipe, uh, I don't know that I would put a tab tablespoon of salt on that last one we did. I would, I think we could use a little less salt on that one, but they were still very tasty. And of course we ate them all. All right, now, 
we're gonna go ahead and mix up the clown the the corn tortilla flour. Ah. And once again, this masa is a different consistency than what I felt before. Um, different than the bisquick and different than the regular flour. This one feels a lot grittier, but not sticky. Okay, this smells just wonderful, by the way. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up. Give it the required five minutes uh, to set. We're gonna roll it in little balls, and then I'm gonna show you how to cheat and use the tortilla press. You don't have to, but I'll show you anyway. And we're back. And our, it looks like our <clears throat> corn flour has been sitting just long enough to uh, be ready for cooking. And remember, uh, with all of these tortillas that we've shown today, there is a wait time before you cook. The dough has to have a chemical reaction with the water, with the ingredients, before we put it into the pan. So we want to make sure we do that. All right, so I'm going to use the tortilla press this time. We'll go ahead and put one of our little balls of corn flour in here, and we'll flatten it. Okay. Now, isn't that pretty? And look how perfectly round this came out. I can take no credit for that whatsoever, by the way. And let's just see how easily this comes up. Voila. And we're going to put this in our pan. And you're going to fry it just like you would a normal corn tortilla. So you use a little bit more oil than usual. Because it actually has to kind of submerge just a little bit. I'll tell you, this tortilla press is doing a pretty good job. Nice and round, and just the perfect consistency. This one's a little broken, but we're going to cook it anyway. Excellent. And it's always nice to oil your uh, tortilla press just a little bit so you don't get any sticky residue and it doesn't disrupt the shape of your beautiful tortillas. And we're going to fry these up just like we did the others. And we'll do a final taste test in just a moment and let you know exactly how these came out. These are cooking up. These are cooking up just lovely, absolutely. I wanted to show you another method as we were talking about stickage earlier. Sometimes oil on the press uh, doesn't quite do the trick. So you can just get two ordinary plastic bags, freezer bags or whatever kind you want and go ahead and put those on either end of the press. This will keep it from sticking, and I'll show you a little trick. Not only will it keep it from sticking, but you already have it on something so that it's very easy to simply flip this into the frying pan. And that was a little bit less messy than with uh, putting the oil on the tortilla press. I would probably say if you have a wooden tortilla press, you would want to use the plastic. So, because there's less tooth uh, in, in this one, but there's more in the wood, and that would probably stick a little bit easy, uh, a little bit more. So I would go ahead and use the plastic bags, and that way you won't have any stick. Now we're going to see how these taste as soon as they're all done cooking. Well, the corn tortillas were a success. Um, I can't tell you how invaluable it is to use this uh, tortilla press. It really got them a good consistency. I was doing this really fast for purpose of demo. I think I might have taken my time and done it a little bit neater if this was for a, an actual meal presentation. But I wanted to reiterate how inexpensive all of this is. Um, the price that we paid for these ingredients is uh, to make it ourselves, you know. I think to buy a package of corn tortillas, we probably used maybe 
one eighth of that cost just to make this little batch. And it was the same with the, the flour tortillas also. So the nice thing about Southwestern food is that you can always enjoy it, but you can enjoy it making it yourself. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining us for our very first uh, virtual Southwest video. We're gonna have a lot more little informative cooking and virtual journeys for you to take to enjoy the Southwest. So on behalf of UNM Recreational Services, I'm Marty Lee Martinez, and uh, I'll see you next time. Mm.